Let us look at uh, a few worked examples which will uh, illustrate the concepts that we have studied so far before moving on to the actual application. Okay? First one is a simple example, ambient air at 25 degree Celsius in one atmosphere is observed to have a dew point temperature of 15 degree Celsius. Determine the relative humidity and the humidity ratio. Okay? So, we are given that uh, dew point temperature T sat of P V is 15 degree Celsius. So, we go to the steam table, temperature table and we can retrieve uh, P V to be 1.706. Uh, kilo Pascal. So, this is the saturation pressure uh, corresponding to, um, uh, uh, so I am sorry, uh, this is the uh, yeah saturation pressure corresponding to 15 degree Celsius. Okay, let us just quickly go back and take a look at this. Okay, so, so T sat of PV equal to uh, 15 degree Celsius. So, uh, so what we do is we go to the table, we go to the table and then we look at the pressure for which the saturation temperature is 15 degree Celsius. Now, P sat of 25 degree Celsius can be retrieved from the table again from the temperature table as 3.169 kilo Pascal. So, we can evaluate relative humidity as P V over P V uh, P sat of 25 degree Celsius and this comes out to be 53.83 percent. Okay? Now, we can also calculate the humidity ratio using this expression since we know P V relative, uh, I am sorry, humidity ratio comes out to be 0 0.01065 kg vapor per kg air. So, you can see that the amount of water vapor is not very high. Okay, it is usually of the order of a uh, few grams. Okay. So, it is important that uh, you uh, sort of uh, have this diagram in mind all the time, so that uh, it is helpful when you are trying to solve problems. So, for this uh, problem, what uh, we could have done is, we could have drawn for example, a TV diagram like this. Okay, so, water vapor is at 25 degree Celsius. So, this is 25 degree Celsius and this is the isobar. So, the actual uh, state of the water vapor let us say is over here. Okay, so, this is the isobar that passes through this uh, given state. And this temperature is given to be 15 degree Celsius. So, we go to the uh, temperature table and determine the pressure for which 15 degree Celsius is the saturation temperature. Okay, and then we retrieve. So, this is 1.706 kPa. And P sat is 3.169. So, this is the isobar corresponding to 3.169 kPa. So, now relative humidity and other quantities may be evaluated. So, please uh, remember this uh, TV diagram and try to uh, use this uh, when you are solving problems. It will be very, very helpful. Next example reads like this, ambient air at a geographic location is 25 degree Celsius, one atmosphere and 90 percent relative humidity. Determine the maximum amount of liquid water that can be extracted per unit volume of ambient air. As um, uh, you may know, uh, nowadays um, it is uh, it is sort of becoming popular uh, to extract water from the air and use it for drinking purposes. So, there are machines which now uh, nowadays do this. Okay? It extracts water, it is a uh, pure water you know that is taken from the air and so on. So, let us you know let us try to find out how much water can realistically be extracted. Okay? Uh, in fact, this example uses 90 percent relative humidity that is relatively uh, high. Okay, so, we must be able to extract a lot of water, one would think. Let us try to calculate. Okay. So, uh, saturation pressure corresponding to 25 degree Celsius uh, is 3.169 kPa from the table. So, for phi equal to 90, from the definition of relative humidity, we can evaluate the partial pressure of water vapor to be 
2.8521 kilopascal. And since we are assuming uh, the water vapor to be an ideal gas, the uh, amount of uh, if you assume the total volume, mixture volume to be 1 uh, meter cube, we can actually evaluate the amount of water vapor to be 20.72 grams. Okay? Or since uh, density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube, we can uh, say that we can extract from this air 20.72 cc of liquid water from 1 meter cube of air. Even with uh, such a high relative humidity, we are able to get only about 21 cc of liquid water. Okay? Under ideal condition, practical situation, it is likely to be much less than this. So, um, so you know, extracting water from air um, uh, to to generate drinking water is not really a very uh, practical way of uh, uh, you know of producing uh, drinking water. Okay. Plus, you have to keep in mind that as you extract the uh, moisture from the air, the air becomes dry. And uh, as I said before, dry air is also not very comfortable that can also cause uh, lots of health issues. So, this my opinion is not a very uh, practical or practicable way of uh, producing drinking water. The last, uh, last example uh, that we are going to look at uh, is this. 1 kg of air at uh, 25 degrees Celsius, 1 atmosphere and 70 percent relative humidity is compressed to 5 atmosphere in a polytropic process. It is then cooled at constant volume to 25 degrees Celsius, determine the humidity ratio and the relative humidity of air after the compression process, also determine the amount of water if any that condenses as a result of the uh, cooling and the final pressure. So, in the initial state relative humidity is given. So, we know P sat of uh, water at uh, 25 degree Celsius. So, we can evaluate the partial pressure of water vapor initially to be 2.2183 kilo Pascal. And the humidity ratio in the beginning may be evaluated using uh, this expression. It comes out to be 0 0.0139 kg vapor per kg dry air. So, this is the initial state the water vapor. So, it is at 25 degree Celsius and a certain amount of uh, relative humidity. Now, it is heated in a polytropic process. So, it goes from state 1 to uh, state 2. Okay? In a, so, this is a polytropic process illustrated just uh, uh, qualitatively. Okay. So, the temperature at the end of the compression may be evaluated uh, using the given expression for uh, the polytropic process and that comes out to be 411 Kelvin. Now, after the compression, remember no water is added or removed. So, the humidity ratio remains the same as uh, 0 0.0139 kg vapor per kg dry air. And since uh, omega 2 is known, we may evaluate the partial pressure of water vapor uh, using this expression. Remember, we already uh, had this expression. So, omega equal to uh, 0 0.622 times P V over P minus P V. So, if you rearrange this expression, since omega is known and the uh, mixture uh, pressure final pressure is also known. Remember, it is compressed to a pressure of 5 atmosphere. So, that pressure is also known. So, you may evaluate P V from this as 11.07 kilo Pascal. The temperature at the end of compression is 411 Kelvin or 138 degree Celsius. So, P sat corresponding to 138 degree Celsius is 341.92. So, the relative humidity comes out to be 3.24 percent. So, so, some of these numbers are entered here. So, T sat corresponding to, uh, <coughs> I am sorry, T sat is the final uh, mixture temperature. So, here is the uh, isotherm corresponding to that and this is the saturation pressure corresponding to 138. So, this is the corresponding isobar. 
So, you can see that the relative humidity has decreased considerably although no water has been removed, but the humidity ratio remains the same because no water has been added or removed. So, now the water undergoes a constant volume cooling process until it reaches the final uh, state 3 where its temperature is uh, 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, we, we have illustrated this qualitatively, but what we do not know is whether state 3 lies, state 3 may also lie here okay, above the saturated vapor line or it can lie below the saturated vapor line as indicated here. So, we need to find out the temperature at which condensation will begin. In other words, we need to find out the temperature of uh, this state point on the saturated vapor line. Okay. Let us try to do that. So, cooling takes place at uh, constant volume. right? So, condensation begins at that temperature when the specific volume of the vapor becomes equal to in the specific volume of the vapor becomes equal to specific volume of the saturated vapor. Okay. So, you can Okay, you can see here that at this state specific volume of the vapor V is also equal to specific volume of the saturated vapor at that temperature. Okay, so, there is, so at this temperature the specific volume of the saturated vapor is equal to specific volume of the uh, vapor that is present in the air. Now, the specific volume of the vapor after the compression process may be evaluated using ideal gas equation of state. We know the temperature we know its partial pressure. So, we may evaluate the specific volume as 17.15. So, we go to the temperature table for water and establish that for a temperature of 42.8 degree Celsius, V g is equal to 17.15. So, condensation begins at 42.8 degree Celsius, which means that for the final temperature of 25, definitely the state is going to be on this side and some water uh, water vapor will definitely condense. So, the final specific volume again remains the same at 17.15. So, we may evaluate the dryness fraction at state 3. So, the dryness fraction at this state may be evaluated as 0.3955. And based on the, remember uh, the definition of uh, dryness fraction is uh, mass of vapor divided by uh, mass of uh, water or mass of mixture which contains both liquid and uh, vapor. So, basically this is m v divided by m uh, liquid plus m vapor. Actually, we may uh, for the present purpose we may write this as m minus uh, m liquid divided by m which itself may be written as 1 minus m liquid over m. So, m liquid is what uh, we are uh, denoting here as m w. So, you can see that m liquid is nothing but 1 minus x times the mass of uh, water, but uh, the uh, water was uh, present initially entirely as vapor. So, that means that this uh, mass of water is equal to the m here is equal to m v 1 and that is what we have used here. Okay, because the water is entirely present as uh, or present entirely as vapor at the beginning of the process. Okay. So, from which we may evaluate mass of uh, liquid as 1 minus x times mass of vapor and mass of vapor itself by definition may be written like this uh, omega omega is nothing but mass of vapor divided by mass of dry air. So, omega 1 times mass of dry air and we may then simplify uh, this further uh, using the uh, definition of omega and the relation to the total mass of the mixture and finally, get this as uh, 8.287 gram. So, that is the amount of water that condenses. Now, the amount of water that condenses is only a few grams. So, its um, volume is going to be negligibly small. So, we neglect the volume occupied by the liquid water. So, the final pressure may then be evaluated like this because uh, state 2 and state 3, uh, state 2 and state 3 are connected by a constant volume process. Okay. So, uh, uh, PA3 
V3 over R times T3 equal to PA2 V2 over R times uh, T2. So, R cancels out V3 equal to V2 constant volume process. So, this also cancels out. So, you may evaluate the final pressure of the dry air to be 359.308 kilo Pascal. Okay. And the partial pressure of uh, the water vapor at the final state is equal to the saturation pressure as that you can see from here. So, the partial pressure of the water vapor is equal to saturation pressure because it is a saturated mixture. So, the pressure of the dry air is known, pressure of the uh, water vapor is also known. So, the mixture pressure is the sum of the two and that is equal to 362.477 kilo Pascal. Okay. So, these three examples illustrate uh, the use uh, of the um, uh, concepts or terms humidity ratio, relative humidity, partial pressure of water vapor saturation pressure, saturation temperature and so on. Okay. So, these all these are interlinked and these three examples indicate how uh, they are interlinked and how they can be uh, evaluated in practical situations. So, what we will do in the next lecture is apply first law to psychrometric process. So far, we have only looked at uh, equation of state and definitions of uh, omega humidity ratio and relative humidity and saturation pressure and saturation temperature. Now, we will apply first law because we said uh, psychrometric applications involve heating cooling which means first law okay? and uh, humidifying dehumidifying is addition or removal of water vapor.